Townsend's Ghouls and Ghosts Oh My. Townsend's annual ghost stroll begins on Sunday, and one organization is fundraising money for adaptive fitness. We shut down Broadway and um, all the businesses participate and hand out candy. Monique Prevell is the Big Sky Autism Project Executive Director and says the Halloween event will bring fun to all. The nonprofit is holding a fun game for kids. Five mystery buckets and you stick your hand in each one, you can't look, and you guess what's in there and correct guesses, um, get a uh, raffle ticket to our prize drawings. By paying $5 to participate in their game or $20 to get a tarot reading, the money will be used to help the nonprofit expand its services. The organization provides children with autism and their families the ability to fine tune their motor skills by creating workouts catered to them. We have the ability in our programs to basically offer anything fitness related for the whole family. Uh, adaptive, adaptive fitness is where we're focusing most of our energy. Prevell says providing the workouts and even participating in the Halloween festivities shows how supportive the town of Townsend is. To be able to provide this for the community as an organization is just phenomenal because we, we just, we are so much a part of this community individually that it's just we're one big family that the whole community is one big family. Big Sky Autism Project is also holding a raffle for a $250 gift card to Rocky Mountain Supply and they will draw the raffle at 5 o'clock. In Townsend, Jordan Johnson, MTN News. For the past 10 years, a group in Deer Lodge has been hosting a haunted house show. This year, there's controversy since they decided to hold it in a former funeral home. They've received many negative messages on social media and voicemails. <laughs> It's getting creepy. It's getting like really creepy. Like is so we're literally looking at a lot of precautions for Friday this entire weekend. Cutler Brothers Productions have hosted the Creep Show event at different locations for a decade. Needing a new location this year, they got permission from the building's owner to use the former Jewel Funeral Home location on Missouri Avenue. Negative messages on Facebook came flooding in by those outraged by the location, even though it's no longer operated as a funeral home. It goes so far beyond, you know, human comprehension that it's like, okay, we can't even take this serious anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. And I will say it's the first time I've ever been called satanic, so that's off my bucket list. <laughs> Some residents are against it because the former funeral home operator died just a year ago. If, if they want to have this uh, event held someplace else, more power to them. But I think at a, at a funeral home, uh, I think it just shows disrespect for the people that have been had a service here and the preachers that have been here. I read some of the negative comments on social media to the brothers about their event. Totally unbelievable and unacceptable. This world is totally spinning the wrong direction. <laughs> sad, sad. Over a haunted house in a private building? Why hasn't anyone filed an injunction to stop this macabre endeavor? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, these are like the grocery store aisle five conversations that used to happen in the 90s, but now they're all on Facebook for, or social media for people to see. I get like they're, where they're coming from. This used to be a funeral home, but it's not anymore. This is just a building. It's wood and mortar and drywall. That's all this place is.